That is a very creepy face. I don't think you are going to sleep tonight because I'm not gonna sleep tonight. Adobe have just released their update to Photoshop 2025 and also Adobe Camera Roll 17. The features in Adobe 2025 are not that staggeringly amazing to me. However, there are some things that are noteworthy to discuss. I feel like their biggest update here is in Adobe Camera Raw. So please watch the follow-up video. You'll see a link in the description below, as well as at the end of this video that will link you to the Camera Raw 17 updates. So whenever Adobe updates, the first thing I do is I go to Google and I type help x adobe.com and then what's new in photoshop 2025 adobe camera all 17 etc cetera, etc cetera. the first thing that usually pops up the first hit that's an actual link is their blog the help x.adobe.com blog and on this page we find that at max adobe released photoshop 2025 and it is version 26. so don't let the 24 25 26 confuse you we are using photoshop 2025 version 26. So it looks like we have more of the same with this generative AI stuff. And I say it that way because there's a lot to it. Apparently we get better results. We'll see if that's true. And we get variations. We've always had variations. Now we can generate backdrops, backgrounds, okay. This one right here, this open color IO uh, and 32 bit tool for HDR workflows. This is something that I think in the future is going to be for those individuals who are working with HDR imagery. However, I don't work with it too much because I don't have an HDR supported monitor. But then there's other changes and enhancements. Let's see what the detailed summary is here. All right, do we have anything crazy? Not much different. Usually down here, other changes and enhancements. This is usually where I find all the things that I really enjoy. Adobe is good at sneaking things into these updates that they don't even put on here. So there might be some things that we find along our workflow that are a little bit different that are probably quality of life things that Adobe is changing. Let's jump into Photoshop now and see what these changes are all about. Since Adobe seems to think this generative AI stuff is so fantastic for us, let's take a look at that first. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna generate, I don't know, let's say like a tree frog and a caterpillar on this image. Let's first start, I'm gonna right here on this leaf, I'm just gonna draw where I want my tree frog to be. And then I'm gonna just type in my generative fill. I'm gonna type in tree frog viewed from above. I gotta be really careful because if I say something like bird's eye view, we're probably gonna see a bird get generated. That's just the way these AI models tend to work. Let's see what happens here when we do this. It's taking a minute, but hey, when you're generating art, it does take at least a minute. Oh, look at that. That's actually a pretty good tree frog. I was not actually thinking that this was going to create anything halfway decent for me, but it appears like we have three really good models for a tree frog. That's awesome. I kind of like this one as he's kind of looking up almost like he's peering up towards the camera. Now, does it match the noise profile? Because this was always something I had an issue with in the past. This is a very large image. This is a 71 megabyte image. If we go to image and go to size, this is 8,640 by 5,760 pixels. It is a large image. So for this to produce this level of generative AI on this photo, I think that actually works out really well. It's a small tree frog, but you know what? There are tree frogs that are that small. So that actually worked out pretty well. Now let's take a look at this one. This is an ant that I photographed with a 5X macro. And let's see if we can make this look like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a circle around here and see if this AI enhancement is truly improved. I'm gonna move about right about here so it looks like this ant is looking down at this person. So we're gonna type in person looking up. Like almost like, oh my gosh, uh, and scared. Okay, <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's see what we get. We never know when we do this generative AI stuff, right? I, this, the anticipation is killing me. It always does when I just see generating and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what Adobe is going to provide for me here. And looking at our variations, okay, we have nothing for the first one. So that really irritates me that if you're going to charge me for these things, then what you generate should work. Let's look at this guy. Um, that is, looks like a toy. It doesn't look like a person. And then here we have a creepy, very creepy face. I, 
I don't think you are going to sleep tonight because I'm not going to sleep tonight. So that didn't work out very well. While they've improved some things in the generative fill, we aren't going to see results every time we use it. To me, I still don't think that Adobe's generative AI and their Firefly model is up to the same level of things like Midjourney or even Magnific that create phenomenal things. I would rather create those things in Midjourney on a white or black background so it's easy for me to remove them and then paste them because I would just get a much better result than what I have here with Adobe's generative. So now let's take a look at a feature that I think is actually gonna be very helpful for us as photographers, and that is in the remove tool. In the remove tool, you're gonna find a new thing here. It says, find distractions. We have wires and cables, one click removal, and then we also have people. Now I'm gonna use this image for the people and this image for the wires and cables. So I've already done this work. This is what I did beforehand. This was me using the remove tool long before the remove tool even had these new features in it. I think I did a pretty darn good job. Let's see if we can put Blake up against this remove tool with its automated discovery of these objects. Now, I also removed all these poles at the bottom and some trash and maybe even some sensor dust spots. So let's see what happens when we go to find distractions and wires and cables. Now this takes a minute. So what I recommend is finding yourself a really good book. This book, Stories Within Stories by my buddy Gavin Hardcastle or Photo Tripper, as you know him on YouTube, provides a phenomenal book for me to look at while I'm waiting for Photoshop to do the things that it does. Now, normally if I was doing this on my own, I wouldn't need to read Gavin's book and I probably wouldn't want to read Gavin's book. I'm just kidding. I really love Gavin. But because I have a whole lot of time right now to do absolutely nothing, waiting for these power lines to be found and removed, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of the photos that we have here from Gavin Hardcastle. Ooh, that's a lovely one. That's a lovely one. Great job, Gavin. Oh, look, it's done. <laughs> cool. I can put Gavin's book down now, thank God. Okay, so looking at this image, what I see in the before is the only thing that this removed was the actual power lines, which is helpful, but removing a power line is extremely simple with the remove tool, and it shouldn't really take that long in my personal opinion. But I think it's a great starting point. This would have helped me remove these beforehand. However, how easy is it to remove these? Well, when I have the remove tool, all I do is click right here, press and hold the shift key, then press enter, and that power line gets removed much quicker than using the automated method of finding those power lines. However, if you add up the cumulative time of all of the power lines and selecting all the power lines, maybe, just maybe, that removal of the that automated removal of the power lines would be about the same. At the end of the day, I think it's a good addition. It's just a little too slow. Let's take a look at the people removal. One thing I find very distracting in an image like this are the tourists. So let's see what happens if we go into the remove tool, find distractions and click on people. All right, it's finding the people for me now. And remember, this one was the one that was editable. Right now, I've got my remove tool set to adding you can actually set it to subtraction. So let's say that of all the people here, these, this, these people right here are the most important to me because they seem happy and they're holding hands. I'll press the negative brush and brush over this so that they stay and then we'll see what happens when we press enter. I'm not sure why the door here is being selected because there are no people in there. Maybe it thinks that there's a person there, so we'll remove that as well. We don't have to do all the way out to this edge. It is a good idea to go over the shadows because you don't want a shadow to be there from a person but not have the person there. I'm gonna go over the steps too because I don't want those steps to get taken out and, and have to be removed by something that's fake when they're already looking pretty good. So then we'll press enter and we'll commit to this and see how Photoshop does at removing these people. All right, it did a pretty decent job. Here is our before, here is our after. This area right here is an area I really expected it to have a difficult time with. If it doesn't remove, if it removes the people, but then it gives you something you don't like, just go back over that spot again and press enter and see if it fixes it. And it might fix it to a point that it could be usable. Now, I'd say that this is a point where it could be usable, but it's not exactly what I would want in my image. So I would probably be a little bit more deliberate about the things that I select to fix this stuff. But again, this is a great starting point for these two individuals to have this whole place to themselves, even though there's all these other cars parked here. I love it when we get new features added to Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. Photoshop 
didn't have necessarily the greatest addition of new features in 2025, but I appreciate the innovation and then pushing the mold with the generative AI. I think it can only get better. It can only get better from here, <laughs> okay? So that's a good thing. We have the, the ability to move up from here, Adobe, and we will. I'm sure you will get this thing ironed out. But thank you for giving me nightmare fuel. I don't know if I'll ever be able to unsee that and neither will you now. The additional tools added to the remove tool are helpful. I don't think that they're necessarily life or workflow changing, but they are helpful. I think with this release, there was a lot more effort put into the raw workflow. So if you wanna watch that video, click on the description below. There's a link there or somewhere around here, there will be a picture for you to click on for that video. If you like this, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop, make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.